Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Developer Dynasty series uh, here on Twitch, it's our Wolverine Studios channel. And tonight, we are bringing you a look at Draft Day Sports Pro Basketball 2023. Uh, for everybody who is familiar with the series, we did a Developer Dynasty uh, a number of months ago to show off the brand new 2D stuff that is coming to the game this year, at least an early look at it. And uh, so we won't go over that again tonight. We'll kind of circle back to that later on in another Developer Dynasty stream before uh, we get to first access. And uh, we're going to look at a bunch of new stuff tonight that's uh, brand new additions to the game. And I'm really excited to uh, show them off to you. So uh, as I always, want to start off by thanking our followers. Uh, C. Jackson Coward, our community manager, has done a great job of continuing to build this channel with his uh, Draft Day Dynasty stream every Wednesday night here on our Twitch channel. And he'll be back tomorrow night with that, so uh, make sure you tune in every Wednesday at 8 to catch uh, C. Jackson Coward uh, going through his uh, college football season right now. And uh, also, huge thanks to our subscribers. I see Hans Melman uh, subscribed with Prime uh, sometime uh, about nine days ago. Uh, must have been during one of the other streams with uh, C. Jackson, so thank you so much for that. And just to remind everybody that if you have Amazon Prime, you can link it to your Twitch account and you get one free sub every month if you do that. It doesn't cost you anything. And if you use that sub on us, we sure appreciate it. It helps us out, helps our channel out, and helps us continue uh, doing what we're doing. So, uh, as always, I, uh, I look forward to comments in the chat. Um, and also, I am on a new PC, so... I apologize in advance if there's any issues with the stream or anything like that. Um, hopefully there's nothing and we will uh, have a great stream. Thank you, uh, GM Games Chris. Just subscribed with Prime. Uh, super excited about that. Uh, and always huge thanks to Chris and everybody at GM Games. Make sure you check them out for all of your gaming news uh, for sports. And also check out their CBGM, the best college basketball league I've ever seen. Uh, it is fantastic, so make sure you check that out. You can find information on that league. Uh, if you go to our website, wolverinestudios.com, and click the Featured Leagues link, uh, you can find the CBGM there. So join up today. You will not find a better uh, a better league out there for basketball than that one. Uh, also, Breeze837 in the chat. Good to see you, as always, Breeze. Uh, so let's get on with it. Um, I'm going to start with some of the small changes, uh, just because I, I want to kind of Build into some of the bigger stuff here. Uh, let's pull up a player card here for uh, Mike. Says, you know what? Tell you, I want to change. I want to do a different player card so I can show off a couple of different things. Okay, so uh, you're going to notice some new things here on the screen, even though it doesn't look that different. There's a couple of key uh, new ratings here. Oh, huge MN Chiller 1064. Subscribing, thank you so much for that. That's awesome. Um, as you can see, I have a, a league set up here on with the one to ten ratings, but there's going to be a couple of new things here. So if you can look at in the middle uh, on the top row here, we have inside shooting. I've added mid range shooting as a category uh, to the game this year. In the past, the the shooting was always kind of split between inside and then outside and outside weighted uh, the mid range and three point shooting. So we're going to break it down uh, going forward here and, and separate the mid-range from the outside shooting. Um, I, I think it it gives a good distinction um, between players who are really, truly like three-point specialists. So if you get, um, you know, a, a guy like a, a Duncan Robinson, uh, who, you know, at least he was uh, a great outside shooter, but not so great inside, um, you know, I think it'll give you a, a better definition on a player like that. Uh, and, and also we'll break down a player like DeMar DeRozan, who is a really good mid-range guy and, and you know, really does really well in that section. And you'll be able to see um, kind of how he's a more quality player in that certain area. Um, of course, those are just examples here. Uh, I have fictional teams, fictional leagues, um, you know, things like that for the stream. But uh, kind of an explanation of what's going on there. You'll also find on the second level here uh, a rating called Clutch Scoring. And we've added uh, that clutch uh, idea into the game. Uh, this will be relied upon in the final minutes of a game. So 
in the first part of the game, the clutch scoring rating won't matter at all. It will come into play uh, in the final five minutes of play plus overtime, stuff like that. And it's not going to be, um, you know, something that is a huge, you know, I- impact in, in a game where a guy who's a 10 will always make a shot and a guy who's a one will always miss. It's just going to be uh, one additional factor that comes into play with scoring in the final minutes of a game. So that will take it, that will go for free throws as well as, um, you know, twos, threes, all that kind of stuff. So, you know, you will have to you know, kind of watch who has a good clutch rating and you'll want the ball, you know, in their hands. You want them on the floor at the end of games, uh, you know, obviously, but uh, that's something new that's going to be added to the game this year. And I think that's going to, you know, just give uh, one more level of detail, which is really the goal at this point. The, the, the game itself is such a great game in terms of franchise play that we're really adding you know, small blocks in some cases, uh, you know, there's some big new features and stuff like that. But when we talk about players, uh, we, you know, I've done so much to develop players as individuals. You can see with their floor range by percentage, the ball actions by percentage to give them um, a really unique feel for each player. And then the player types, you know, this player has attacker, sharpshooter, bucket getter, ball magician. So he's really a hell of a player. Um, you know, it's just one more level of detail that can make a, a player come to life and and really feel more you know real in the game, which is what uh, we're always going for. One thing I borrowed from Brooks and the football team is uh, this little icon up here that will show up on player cards for the players who have won awards. Uh, you can always go and look in their pro- player profile and see uh, what awards they've won, but this will show you at a glance. Uh, he was all league second team last year. Uh, let's pull up some of these other guys and see. Uh, so this player, Jonathan McClinton, he was an all-star starter. He was all league first team. So that's why he has the gold award here. And then the silver for all defense second team 2022. So when you get way down the road in a season and you see this, you know, all lined up with all kinds of awards and all stars and stuff like that. That's going to be really cool as you look at some of the best players uh, in your leagues. It'll give you a really nice visualization of just how good of a player that was and how many awards uh, he was able to win over his career. I'm going to switch over to the depth chart screen here. Uh, Depth chart screen, you know, no, no real changes here. In case anybody missed this before, this is a, a late ad, I think, last year's game. There is a box up here that says swap debt and minutes together. Um, that's there. So if you want to move somebody, you know, if he's injured, you want to switch him with somebody on the bench, and you want to, you don't want to have to reconfigure all the minutes, you can check that box before you make the swap in your depth chart. And then uh, it will switch the player in the depth chart as well as the minutes to kind of make things easier for you. But the reason I bring this screen up is because under team options, I've moved lineup tracking and lineup tracking four factors from the insights screen to this screen because I think it's really more relevant here. So as you go to set your depth chart, you can click on the lineup tracking. You can see what your best lineups are. Uh, Same thing if you want to look at the lineup tractor for four factors you can see what your most successful lineups are and then you can click return to grid and go back and then make the lineup changes right then and there rather than having to go to the insight screen see that information and then click back to the depth chart screen and try to remember the information all that's going to be here now on the depth chart screen for you so you can really make um, better use of that lineup data uh, MN Cheller in the 1064 in the chat says, can we set up a career using the more basic financials and no free agency for historical season? You can do a career with the more basic financials, but there's no way to turn off free agency right now. Um, I guess that's kind of a new, I think the first time anybody's asked me to turn off free agency. You can turn off trading. Uh, that's an option if you go to the top and click on the option, the game options. There is an option to turn off trading, but not free agency uh, because it it goes through that specific. I mean, it's got to go through that part of the game and it's pretty integral. So I don't know that uh, that I'll 
ever put in that you can skip free agency. Um, I guess it's something to think about. One, I mean, one idea you could do is you could have a like a league where you're a multiplayer league where you control all the teams, but uh, put everything on AI manage and then turn that off during free agency and advance through it so nobody signs, and then switch it back to the AI control so they can run their teams during the year. But uh, that's probably the, the closest option for uh, having no free agency right now. Uh, okay, let's uh, I'll click over the team info screen for a second as well. Uh, I made a post this morning. Uh, I put it out on, on Twitter and Facebook as well. And uh, Jackson's going to put it in Discord if he hasn't already. In our forums now at WolverineStudios.com, in the mod form, there's a 2023 section. In that 2023 section, there's instructions for um, creating a roster mod, you know, the, the file to use for that, uh, for the team logos, and for the jerseys, and as well as information about the team court. Uh, the, the court and jersey graphics have changed dramatically in this version. So the old graphics you may have used for that will no longer work. Um, so I put modding instructions up there and a template and stuff for the jerseys. I'm going to work on a template with the court. You can see the court down here. Uh, obviously, it looks far different. It's a far different view. Instead of the overhead view, it's more of a side view now. And you're going to have these 2D models, uh, you know, working on the screen here, as we showed in an earlier stream, and we'll show in another one before launch. But I want to show the jerseys real quick. Uh, the jerseys now give you the opportunity to actually create a jersey for your team in the game. Uh, I, mean, I don't mean in the game, you can create it, but create them outside to be used in the game. Uh, and I've added a fourth, uh, a fourth jersey so that you have an alternate jersey one and alternate jersey two that you can use. So uh, there's instructions in the forum on how to, uh, how to size the jerseys. I put the model up there so you can use that and, you know, and adjust for the jerseys. So I know in the NBA, I think teams have like five jerseys now, uh, which is just a little bit of overkill, I think. But I did add the fourth one so that you could have uh, the equivalence of the home, the away, the statement, I think it is. And then the, uh, I think the city, and then I think they have the classic one. But I mean, you can make you can make your alternates whatever you want. If you want to design them like the NBA teams, you can. Um, if you don't, if you want to make them your own crazy ideas, you can. And you'll actually see them on the the icons, on the, the models, on the court, and they're in the 2D. So it, it is for more than just show here. You'll get to see them uh, play out in the game. And I think it's going to be, uh, I think it's going to be really cool. I really like uh, what we're doing with it. Uh, I want to move over to the Play Sim screen for just a second talk about another thing that's coming up. I'm going to skip ahead a couple. Uh, I have replaced the rookie and sophomore game in the league. Believe it or not, there are actually people who would have problems with their league files if they did some really crazy editing and made everybody like a rookie in the league to start. And there would be no sophomores and people would have an error because there was no sophomores for the sophomore teams. Uh, so... What uh, I decided to change it to was a Future Stars game, which will be rookies and sophomores on the same teams, and it'll be East versus West, uh, just like the actual All-Star game in there. There's the Western versus Eastern All-Stars, and there'll be the Eastern and the Western Future Stars moving forward. So that should alleviate people's problems if they have an all-rookie league for some reason, uh, and also kind of model a little bit more of what's going on now since they had the uh, the Rising Stars games and stuff like that. I, I didn't do it where there's four teams and, you know, some kind of, like, little mini tournament or anything like that. I don't want to get too crazy with it because it's just an extra thing in the game, but we will go East-West Future Stars now uh, moving forward from here. Let's go over to the office screen because... It's time to talk about a big change, and that big change is the coach level badge system that's coming to the game this year. So 
So you will see on the Your Skills here, there's this bronze badge with level four, and there's a, a uh, gauge here that says 84% and then Upgrade Skills button. So uh, this is not only a new feature to the game, but also to simplify things for people making rosters and uh, stuff like that with the coaching staffs. I, I know it's really tedious to rate coaches like across the board in all these things. And, uh, you know, I mean, you're rating what's the difference between a third assistant coach and a, a second assistant coach. I mean, how many, you know, should you give in, in scouting and player development and all that kind of stuff? And it gets really tedious. So I've taken that out. And now the coaches are going to get initial ratings based on uh, both their their job that they're set for and their career win-loss championship total, stuff like that. So the game will create the ratings for coaches. Uh, and when you start, you're gonna there's a, going to be challenge mode where you start at a level zero and your skills will all be basic. And you're going to earn upgrades to those skills. And then when you get an upgrade, uh, you can click the upgrade skills button and then you can increase your skills in the areas that you want to as you go. So you'll be able, you'll be earning upgrade points and you'll be able to increase, you know, your levels in basketball IQ, offense knowledge, defense knowledge, evaluating potential and player development. So the, the categories haven't changed for a coach. Just instead of having like a random progression for yourself, you're going to progress based on your success level. So when you have points available, I haven't done any upgrades with my coach, so he has 20 points available. You just go here. Uh, I'm going to increase my basketball IQ, my potential, offense, defense, player development. And you can do that until you use up all your points. And then every time you reach a new uh, badge level, you get a few more points so you can upgrade your skills. If you play over a long career, uh, you'll notice that your skills can go very, very high. And if you get to um, you know, an elite coaching or general manager career, you can get all the way to level 99. You'll get the special badge and you'll get, you know, you'll be able to max out your upgrade, you know, your skills basically like that. So it really gives you incentive to kind of play over a, a long period of time and also reward you for uh, how you do rather than kind of basing it just on a, a, an initial random, you know, level of, of potential. So the next question obviously is how do you get, uh, you know, your badge points? What, what do you earn badge points for? And that's going to be for a number of things that happen over the course of the game itself. So it's a little bit different if you're a general manager versus a coach. And I'm going to go to the staff page so you can see that it's not just for you. It's for all of the coaches and uh, general managers in the game. Um, you know, you get, you'll earn points towards that next level when you win. You know, you'll earn a very small amount of points if, you know, just for coaching and participating in a game. Um, you know, maybe for, as a GM, for signing a free agent or drafting a player or making a trade, things like that. So all of the actions that you're doing in the game earn you, you know, small points uh, as you go on and allow you to upgrade your badges, um, you know, as you go. And you'll notice that, you know, the, the head coach here, George Dement, is level 12. Uh, he's got two stripes on his bronze badge. So, you know, you, you earn the badge first and then the stripes and then you graduate to the next level uh, of badge from there all the way through, you know, the, the silver and the gold and then to the, the diamond level. So it's, it's going to be fun to, to look and see how you're doing compared to other coaches or GMs in the league. It'll be easy to compare. Uh, you just, you know, see what your badge level is and we'll we'll see who can, you know, play the challenge mode and start at level zero and really level themselves up. Uh, over time. A GM Games Chris in the chat says he noticed in PB22 it's pretty random for which players become coaches and GMs. Any chance to ensure Hall of Fame and all-star talent definitely stay? Seems to be a lot of average players taking that continuity. Um, it's not actually random. It's really based on uh, the player's 
basketball, uh, like the court IQ. So players who have a higher court IQ rating tend to get more consideration to stay as a, as a coach or a GM. You know, I, I think that I think it's it's been pretty clear that in the NBA, uh, just because they were a Hall of Famer All Star player has not made them a good coach or general manager. In fact, I mean, I, I think uh, you look at right now with, with Brooklyn with Steve Nash, not exactly a, a great coach. Uh, you know, Isaiah Thomas, obviously, you know, <laughs> one of the worst GMs ever. Joe Dumars was not a great GM over a long period of time. Um, you know, so it's, it's not necessarily that, and it doesn't, like you said, it doesn't disqualify players either who were, you know, maybe not great players, but, you know, turned out to, to stick in the game as GMs and coaches, because I, I think there's been a, you know, a, a level of success too for some of those guys in the NBA that, I mean, they were always just good basketball minds. Maybe they weren't great players, um, you know, and I understand your point of wanting to keep legends in the mix. Um, maybe it should give more weight to that and just make them bad GMs and bad coaches, but they stick around. Uh, so that, that's possibly, you know, because I do agree that if they were a great player, they at least get a chance, you know, most, most times to be a coach or maybe, you know, even get the chance to be a GM just because they were a great player. And then it turns out you realize that, well, being a great player doesn't equate to anything necessarily in those skills, but we, we could still add those guys in, giving them that chance just to be, you know, inept coaches and, and GMs. So that's a good point, Chris. And uh, that's something that uh, I, I can certainly give, uh, give some thought to. In addition to earning badge points from just doing your, your daily activities and stuff like that, there's going to be additional ways to urge badge points which I think you're really going to like, and I'm going to show you one of them right now. There is a new icon at the top of the screen here, the microphone, and if you hover over it, it says press conference. This will give you the opportunity to call a press conference at your convenience, and you can't do it every day. I think I, I, think I set it up that when you have a press conference, you have to wait maybe 10 days or 14 days in the game. I don't remember offhand to do another one so you can't just rapid fire these things and build up all kinds of crazy points in one year. But if you do the press conference, it will give you the opportunity to earn badge points. Uh, the press conference is replacing the emails that you got, you know, which most people probably ignored that asked you for a comment about a certain player. So that part is all gone. Uh, so you don't have to stop and, and check emails to see if there's any requests for comments and stuff anymore. You can have the press conference whenever you want to, and let's uh, let's click on one and see what happens. So you are set up here at the podium. You've got your you know your logo background back there, and again, this is completely optional. If you don't want to do the press conference, you don't have to do a press conference. But if you want to work on building your coach up a little quicker, uh, you can earn upgrade points by doing it. So. At the bottom of the, uh, the screen here, it gives you a question. He says, with the awful record, uh, have you considered that you might have to fire your head coach to save your own job? So uh, as general manager, I'm sure that's a question you would love to get. Uh, you know, your team sucks. You're going to can the coach in order to save yourself. And you get five different responses to choose from. Each response has an outcome. So, uh, you know, the, the first response says, uh, you know, we have a plan and we're sticking to it and everything's going to be fine. So, you know, the first response there is, uh, you know, a very strong defense of the head coach. You know, then the, the second response says, you know, I'm disappointed with our record, but it's not just the coach's fault. Everybody does a better, needs to do a better job. So, you know, there you're kind of spreading blame to the players as well, uh, which could upset some of them, um, you know. You can say, I'm not going to discuss that right now. Let's let things play out and we'll evaluate items after the season. If you say that, you might be suggesting to the coach, you know, yeah, I am going to fire you. I'm just not saying it right now. So that might affect, you know, his happiness with the organization. It might affect the job that he's doing. 
Um, you can say he's our coach for now, and I think we have to support him and hope he turns this around, which is basically saying today he's the coach, but I'll probably fire him as soon as I can. And you can also throw him under the bus and say, you know, hey, I put together a good team, and he, uh, you know, he, he he's failing. He It's all his fault, which will undoubtedly, you know, not make him happy, but it might score you a couple points with the ownership group uh, because you're saying, hey, I did my job. It's this guy who's got to go and we're going to get rid of him. So, you know, you have a, you know, a wide array of choices here. Um, I'll throw it out to the crowd. What, what do you guys want to see me uh, respond with here? One through five. The, uh, we'll see what kind of response the audience wants and, uh, and what we get out of it. All right, MN Cheller says two. Breeze says three. MN Cheller was first in, so we'll go with two. He's disappointed, but everybody uh, needs to do a better job. So this says that the team has mixed reactions, both towards the coaching staff and in their desire to give effort, as some do not agree with their comments, while others do. So, uh, that gives us a mixed attitude changes towards the coach. So some of the players, uh, you know, may have a little bit more respect for the coaching staff and the organizations. Some uh, won't because they don't feel it's their fault. They feel it's the coach's fault. Uh, and then after that, you can choose to take another question. And you can exit the press conference. There is three questions max and you get points, you know, a certain level of points for actually for answering each one. So uh, let's take the next question. Uh, Ron Boyce is someone I know you had high hopes for. Do you think he is on track in his development so far? So not only do you get asked questions about the coach, you get asked about some of the players. Um, and, and it depends on whether they're asking about a veteran, a, a rookie, stuff like that. So, you know, my options here, I, I can say I'm happy with Ron. He's, you know, even better than we thought. So you're giving really high praise to this player. Um, you can say that you have high hopes for him. And, you know, he's coming along pretty good. So, you know, he, he's doing pretty good. Uh, you can all the way down to saying he struggled to put it together. But, you know, we keep hoping he'll come around, which, again, you know, you're saying, you know, hey, I had, you know, hopes for him, but he's, you know, kind of not so good. So all of these things, you know, will have an impact in some way. So uh, we'll go with Breeze this time. He wanted to play it safe on the last one. So we'll we'll take the middle of the road here and say he's, Right on track. He's doing exactly what we thought. And, uh, you know, so the response to this is that he appreciates the comments, but he might get a bit of a swelled head. So you said he's doing just what you thought he would do. Uh, so that made him happy. He got an attitude increase, but his effort is going to decrease slightly because you said he's doing fine. So why should he work harder if he's if you said he's doing fine? So all of these things have some kind of you know, in or out to them, uh, some kind of response. So not only do you get the opportunity to increase, you know, your experience and your badge, you know, leveling up through the press conference, you also get the opportunity to, you know, maybe change something about a player, especially if you have a player who's unhappy. Maybe you hope you get asked about him and you can pick a response that, uh, that will try to build him up. So it's an opportunity, you know, you're looking for that opportunity to, to, build them up and say something nice about them and maybe repair a relationship that isn't, you know, really strong between you and yourself and the player, the coach and the player. So the, the, the press conference idea has really a number of, you know, of different options and benefits to it. It's not just for the sake of, you know, leveling yourself up for more points. So if I go back to my office page now, I am at 88% of the way towards another upgrade. So, it, you know, that was a nice little jump and I'm only on level four. So it doesn't take a lot of points, a lot of actions early on to level up. In fact, this is only halfway through the second season of a league and I'm already to level four. So you'll find that early on you can level up much quicker. And then as you get to a higher level, you know, you really need to do unique things to continue to level up like win a championship or something like that. So even if you have a really long career and you're just average and mediocre, you're not going to get to level 99 because, you know, you're not going to be considered 
one of the greats. Uh, if you have a career like, you know, Pat Riley or George Popovich or, you know, Phil Jackson, something like that, you know, then you're going to get towards the, the very upper level of the, the badge. So it, it really gives, uh, you know, an opportunity to see kind of how you, uh, you know, give you an, an overall score sort of as a player in the game, as a general manager, as coach, stuff like that. So I think it's a really fun, cool addition. I appreciate the comments. Um, you know, MN Chiller saying that he likes the press conferences a lot more than the emails. And I do too. It's it's way more interactive, um, and I, I think it's really something that you know is enjoyable. So as you see now that the I did the press conference, the microphone icon is grayed out, so I can't go back and just do another one and you know artificially build up my skill level by doing that. And uh, <laughs> M and Chiller says, "Can we get this in football?" I, I think if people like it then yes, I think that'll be something that comes to the football games. And really, that's that's kind of how Brooks and I work. We, we try to keep the games similar uh, in terms of how they look and feel. That's number one. Because you know, if you're a guy who likes basketball and plays our basketball games and then says, you know, hey, I like the basketball game, let me try football, I, I want you to be able to go in there and s- know where everything is and, and how to advance and how to move forward and and where to find things. So I want everything to be similar. So that's why the games look and feel the same. And then, you know, as we develop our own games each year, uh, we both come up with ideas that we like and implement in our games. And then, you know, it's kind of like a test run. And if, if something works really well, then, you know, the other person has incentive to add it. So, you know, like I took the, uh, the, the uh, on player card badges, uh, you know, for the, uh, you know, the awards and stuff like that from Brooks and the football side, you know, maybe next year he'll implement the press conferences. Uh, the pro game has that new, a totally new game feature called Road to MVP, where you're playing as a player instead of the coach or general manager. And, you know, if that's well received, that will probably be something that makes it into, you know, the basketball games down the line where you could, you know, play it out as a player instead of being the one running the team. So it's, it's always, you know, it's important for our community to say when they really like something, uh, you know, like Evan Chiller did and say, you know, Hey, I really like this. This is cool. I want to see this in all the games because then it gives us the feedback to know, okay, we, you know, we hit on something there. Uh, you know, let's expand it where we have it. Plus let's uh, keep it going in our, you know, let, let's build it up in our other games. Uh, if you haven't clicked the milestone tracker to before, make sure you do that when you get further into a league. Like I said, this is a fictional league, and it's only in its second season, so there's nobody closing in on any milestones right now. But this is really fun, page when you have a league that is, you know, got all the history to it because you can see, you know, who's closing in on being all-time leaders in those uh, those categories. So don't ignore uh, that page if you uh, if you have leagues that go deeper into careers. Uh, There is one other thing I wanted to at least mention. I can't do it right now on the stream because I'm past the trade deadline, but for two or three versions at least, people have wanted to access the player cards from the trade screen. I finally got that working. So (laughs) you uh, just it's something that people have wanted for a long time. The way the screen was set up, because of how it was working in the the, the back end software that we're using in the you know the AU program that we were using, I couldn't get it before. I finally got it showing up. Um, let me see if I have another league I can pull up. Yeah, so here is just an example of it. You click, and then the player card will come up. So for everybody who's wanted that function, uh, you're getting it finally. <laughs> All right, let me go back to my league here so you can uh, take a look around at a couple other things. Um, 
And by the way, if anybody has questions on the modding items, let me bring that up again. Uh, let me pick another team so we can see. So if you have questions on how to mod the jerseys or things like that, uh, just reach out to me. Let me know. The link, the, the threads in the forum are locked because I just want them to be informational threads. But if you have questions, you can post in the mod forum or hit me up on Twitter or our Slack channel or something like that. And I'll be happy to kind of help you any way I can. Uh, as I said, I'm working on some kind of template for the courts so that you can get in there and, and mess with them without having to do too much direct work on your own. Um, you know, it, it's going to be cool when we, you know, when you see it again, I, I made a, a couple more changes to it. I'm still working on some things there, but uh, it, it's, it's really, I really think people are going to have a reason to play the 2d games now rather than seeing the boxes move on the screen you know, you're going to see players move on the screen and it's, you know, it's icons. You see the icons that were on the Jersey screen here. These are the icons that will be moving around the screen. Um, but it's, it's much better than looking at the squares. So you'll, you'll actually be watching basketball now. And one thing that I mentioned in the modding category for the, the roster files, there is a category in there called model number. What that is, is, the player models on the game for players who have the in-game faces, you know, the, the, the in-game faces like this, their model on the court skin tone will match the model of their face here. So if you have a player who doesn't have a face and it's just the grayed out, you know, default player icon guy here, he'll have the same grayed out color on the court. And if you have players who... Uh, you know, are the game created fictional players and rookies and stuff like that. They'll have a skin tone for their model that matches, uh, you know, matches their, their face here. If you take the, a, a roster file that you're creating and you create like, and you know, let's say you create an NBA roster file from it. Uh, you can go in there and select a model, you know, in the, the database, pick a model number. And I'll also do it in the game. I haven't done it yet, but I will work during, on the player editor uh, so that you can have the, the default faces or if you're using faces like from the GM games face pack, then you can choose a model number which matches the models from the default players in the game here. Uh, and you can use a model number so it will show them with a, a skin tone on the court, if that makes sense. It was a long-winded explanation for what we're doing here, but uh, that way, if you, I know Chris puts in a ton of work on that face pack, and everybody loves it. Um, but uh, you know, if you use it, they won't have a model number assigned to them. So you know, maybe somebody will create a roster mod that will have the model numbers in there, or a way to you know update that in the game for for the mods or something. Somebody will come up with something creative. Uh, but that way, your players on the court will not be all the you know the default gray, dark gray models running around as we showed off in the the stream a couple months ago when we first introduced the two D stuff. Uh, they'll all have different skin tones, and it'll make you know it'll make it easier to uh, recognize the players on the floor in addition to their jersey numbers and stuff like that, of course. Uh, and then says the big question: When do you want my money? That's always the big question. I want the money now. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, honest answer, we are going to begin first access. Uh, the target is uh, two weeks. So I know the NBA season starts next week. Uh, the target for first access will be in two weeks and then the official launch uh, in a little over a month. Um, there's still some things I want to put in. There's, there's a couple of big things that I... I purposely did not show on the stream here because uh, I'm still tweaking them. Um, you know, it's, and I, and I don't want to show them off in a half done state because if I don't like it, then uh, it's something I've talked about. It's something I've announced. So nobody will even know if it didn't make it in. 
but there are some really cool other things that I'm working on. Uh, we'll, we'll do another developer dynasty and kind of show off more of the, the 2D stuff and uh, some of these other things. But uh, just know that in addition to everything you saw tonight and we talked about, there's even more than that coming. So uh, for everybody who's always, you know, always asking that question, you know, do I upgrade this year? Um, you know, you heard all the new stuff that I talked about tonight. Uh, the, the press conferences, the new coach, uh, you know, the, the coach badges and leveling up, uh, you know, the addition of the uh, young stars games, the awards on the icons, the jerseys you can add, uh, the lineup analysis being on the depth chart screen, accessing the, the player cards from the trade screen. Um, you know, it's, it's all there and there's more coming. So all of you hoop fans, uh, I hope you're excited. There's a lot coming in this year's version. Uh, just like I always try, I, we always try to provide uh, as many new features and upgrades and changes uh, as we can. One other thing I will mention, you can't see it in the game anywhere. I can't show it off, but I, I have spent time working on the draft classes as well. Um, more so in the depth of the draft classes, not so much as the top guys. I, I think it's always done a pretty good job of the top guys, but I think that maybe depth wise later in the draft, the players haven't quite been good enough uh, over a long period of time. So you can expect the drafts will be a little bit stronger on the back end, you know, the, the late first, early second guys, stuff like that, um, you know, kind of beef up the draft classes a little bit. So that's, uh, that's something new that has gotten attention as well. So as you can see, a lot's gone into it. When, the, when you see, if you haven't seen the 2D, you can go to our YouTube channel and look at kind of the early version of it um, from our earlier Developer Dynasty stream. You will see how much work has gone into this version. There has been a lot of work. So I'm really excited to, to be getting close to launch. Uh, I was really excited to be able to do this Developer Dynasty tonight and show off, finally show off some of these new things, especially the press conference thing. Um, I had somebody email me saying that, you know, this is, it's really a feature that's needed in the game. And I, I hope he's excited to see that I was already one jump ahead of him on that one. So uh, thank you, everybody, for coming out tonight. The replay will be on YouTube in a couple of days. Uh, thanks for our new subs during this, uh, this stream as well. GM Games Chris and MN Cheller 1064. Really appreciate that support. And, of course, the ongoing support from... GM Games, and our community as a whole. Uh, I, I love our community, and you guys are so supportive. And it's it's always exciting to get a new release out because, you know, I always like to give something new to the community and get the feedback and get the, you know, the initial excitement and get everybody excited and ready uh, for another year of the games. So the, the college football game is doing great. Pro football is finishing up its first access period and the official launch we're just waiting on steam approval there and then that will be official so if you're waiting to uh, pre-order on pro football i would do it right now because you don't have much time left and uh you know a couple weeks first access for pro basketball starts so it is a really exciting time at wolverine studios a lot going on we'll be having more developer dynasty streams for pro basketball and pro football and uh c jackson will be here tomorrow night in our channel with his draft day dynasties uh, stream and his college football season. So thank you everybody for uh, coming out tonight, all of your comments. It was a great chat and I uh, hope you will share some of the excitement of uh, things you saw. Uh, encourage your friends to come check out the stream here on Twitch afterwards or uh, catch it on our YouTube channel. So thanks everybody for coming tonight and we will talk to you real soon.